Hi, Fishian. How are you guys doing? I hope you had a great week. Yeah, we're grateful for life. We're grateful for everything God has done to us. God is faithful. Yeah, we serve a God that is wonderful, loving, caring. Yeah, he's been kind. He's been gracious. Yeah, let's be grateful. I'm thankful. You know, I tell you guys, Thanksgiving is necessary. It's important in the life of every believer. Yeah, if you're a Christian, be grateful. We have so many things to be thankful for. Yeah, but the devil sometimes deceives us. Then we remove our minds. We start focusing on the things that we don't have. I'm forgetting the many, many amazing things that we already have. Yeah, so my earnest prayer for you is that you become a person, a young man of gratitude, full of thanksgiving. You know, they say some people see the cup as half empty while others see it as half full. Remain optimistic. Remain uh, a person where people of faith, come on, we believe in God. We believe that all things work together for our good. All things are working together for our good. Praise the name of the Lord. God's intention towards us are good ones. They are very, very good. We are going to have good, we are going to end well, no matter what the devil tries. Yeah, we will go through temptation, trials will come, hard times will come, but we cheer up. We are more than conquerors. Praise the name of the Lord. We are more than conquerors. Are you struggling academically and, uh, and your, 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 your mind is telling you you are mount nothing? No, no. You're going to. You're going to do great things in life, whether the devil likes it or not. You're going to go places. You're going to do great things in the name of Jesus. So do not limit your, 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 yourself to your current situation. Keep moving. Yeah, keep making progress. And I guarantee you that your future is bright in the name of Jesus. You're going to have a bright future, more than you imagine. Amen. And that is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing, nothing will cut your life short. In the name of Jesus, you are going to do great in this life. It is well with you. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Perhaps anyone sick, I command the healing power of God to fall upon you this very moment in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are made whole. I declare that you are healed and you are made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Perhaps you are struggling financially in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will open doors for you and your parents in the name of Jesus. That's cool fees that maybe you've not paid. God is opening doors right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So welcome once again to church. God bless you real good in the name of Jesus. Yeah, uh, perchance this is your first time joining us. Welcome. We're glad you are joining us. God bless you real good in the mighty name of Jesus. We are called Fusion and uh, we are the youth church of One Church International. One Church is located in the city of Lagos, the Shangotedo Axis. So and if you find yourself in the city of Lagos, please do join us and we will welcome you and make you feel at home and your life will never remain the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We've been on our wonderful series, Life Reveal, uh, where we started studying the book of Luke. Yeah, And today um, we, 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 we're continuing in our study of the book of the Acts of the Apostle. Yeah, It's all about Jesus Christ and the works he did. And about the, how Christianity uh, continued from the days of Jesus to the days of the apostles, yeah, and they handed over to, the, to, 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 to others to this day. And that is why Christianity, the uh, followers of Jesus, are still following his teachings from the time he walked here on earth to the time he left, because he left his disciples, the disciples took on the teachings of Jesus to this day. We are followers of Jesus Christ all over the world. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, we, we learned so many. Last week we learned about the Pentecost. You know, growing up as a child, uh, we used to have pictures demonstrating the day of Pentecost in our house. I remember I would see people with flames of fire on their heads. And I'll be wondering, could this be real? And let me tell you the truth, guys, it was real. And to this day, yeah, when the power of God falls upon people, you don't know, you see their, their lives transformed. I've experienced people um, transform, I have personally experienced transformation in my life and I've seen people that the, the world has written them all off but when they encountered the power of God they became a different as if something happened to them I saw trans, I've seen transformation in the life of people so I don't care what people say about you 
I don't care what your teachers, I don't even care what your parents say about you. But I believe one thing, that our God is faithful. And, and if you study and the power of God comes upon you this day, your life will be transformed and you will never, never regret it being a child of God, being a follower of Jesus Christ. When the power of Pentecost falls upon you, I'm, I guarantee you for sure, you will walk in the fullness of God. You will walk in the fullness of your destiny. You will fulfill your destiny. Nothing will cut your life short in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, yeah, still in our series live review, we're going to be learning the kingdom of God is for everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. The kingdom of God is for everybody. I'm super excited knowing that the kingdom of God is for, for me. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter what your background, you are, where the world places you economically. It doesn't matter. The kingdom of God is for everybody. And today, I encourage you all to study the book of Acts of the Apostle. From chapter 8 to chapter 12 this week, all through this week. Last week we, we studied Acts of the Apostle, chapter 1 to chapter 7. I, got, I, 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 I recommend you read a chapter per day. Yeah, Today, Sunday, you could read chapter 8. Yeah, Then Monday, you read chapter 9. Tuesday, chapter 10. Uh, Wednesday, chapter 11. Uh, Thursday, chapter 12. Friday, chapter 17. And Saturday, chapter... Um, I, I beg your pardon... Um, I mean, today you read chapter 8, then you read chapter 12, tomorrow, uh, chapter 9 tomorrow, you continue reading until you complete the book of Acts of the Apostle, yeah, and uh, by the grace of God Almighty, and when you are studying it, please make sure you are prayerfully studying it, and God is going to help you in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, uh, this is the event for today, this is how our program is going to go today, we are going to join our choir in praise and worship. And after the praise and worship, we have a video on today's topic from our friends at Switch. And uh, after that video, I'll be right back to uh, summarize. So God bless you real good in the mighty name of Jesus. Koya, please, over to you. Yeah. Every day. 
things you've done, Jesus. We will exalt you. Salute to him this evening, for he's a faithful God. Are you ready? Let's give him some dance. Hey, hey come on now.
Hey Shelby, do you have any weird connections or quirks in your family? Yes, let me think. Okay, so my aunt, she dated Tom Cruise when she was in high school. And then okay. when I married my husband, I found out that his mom dated him too. So Tom Cruise was like maybe almost my uncle or father-in-law. Kind of funny. Wow, that, that's incredible. <laughs> what about you? Any quirks? Connections? Uh, no connections that I know of, uh, but quirks. Me and my daughter are both freaked out by feet. Like, yeah, we don't do feet at so all. So this was my foot. and I'd, I'd be whoo, gone. <laughs> so what about you? Take a couple minutes and chat with the people in your group. Oh, this is funny. My whole dad's side of the family lives in Rocksville. I, I don't really speak Arabic. This is weird. Um, so... It's normal to have arranged marriages in the Middle East. My dad has tried to arrange my marriage three times. <laughs> so, um, but it's not weird for that to happen. And so that's really normal. But for me as an American, like I grew up here, I was born here. So like for me, I was like, dad, quit it. I mean, I have, so I have a bunch of siblings and I have this little brother that's nine and he can literally tell you the most facts out of any person I've ever met. My grandma, who I don't really, like, I know her well, but she lives in Minnesota. She's kind of strange. She's like a hoarder. My dad was like, listen, he's a doctor. He's got blue eyes. He, he'll, he'll take good care of you. And so, like, my, my stepmom was like, yeah, the blue eyes, dude. Like, he's real cute. He's got blue eyes. And I was like, okay, I get that the man has blue eyes, but I'm not going to Iraq and I'm not getting married. It's not because he's Iraqi. It's because I'm, like, 15 and like oh. he's my cousin so that's why <laughs> i don't know how to follow that up um my grandpa is an astrophysicist and he works at nasa well he did i think he worked at nasa he also discovered a star my whole family's just like really smart i know that's like egotistical but they just are i don't know they all went to mit and like all those kinds of places so yeah my dad drinks a lot of tea <laughs> i thought that was going somewhere else my grandpa eats shrimp tail my grandpa is really weird but i'm just we love that. him so He's much awesome oh my, my dad owns some wendy's that's that's really it <laughs> My sister is like, she's a, she's a character. She's like super, super into theater. She's like, think of the stereotype of theater kid. That's like 100% her. My dad adopted a bearded dragon. Hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I don't know. The last video from the Bible Project began with the Holy Spirit being poured out, which led to the Jesus community in Jerusalem growing in big ways. And then from Acts chapter 7, we saw the death of Stephen scared many of the first Christians into leaving Jerusalem. But as they traveled, they took the message about Jesus with them. The attack on Stephen was the first of many. For those early Christians, as it is with many Christians in the world today, the cost of being a witness for Jesus was high. To their credit, the disciples have come a long way. They're leading this beautiful Jesus community in Jerusalem, and they're taking care of the poor, loving and caring for their neighbors. Yeah, they're not talking about planning a violent takeover of the Roman government or pretending like Jesus doesn't exist. They're doing well. They've come a long way in understanding the kingdom of God. And this next section of Acts shows us how God was revealing just how far He would take them as they followed the Spirit's leading, and that the family that God was bringing together was bigger and more inclusive than they ever imagined. God's Spirit was transforming the church from a small collective in one city into a multi-ethnic movement that quickly spread throughout the nations. In the video we're about to watch, look for this idea that the kingdom of God is for all people, Jews and non-Jews, men and women, rich and poor, people that fit into it easily and people who you wouldn't expect. It's eclectic and very diverse. During the first century, when the Romans ruled the known world, a grassroots countercultural movement was born in the eastern end of the empire. Yeah, it started among the Jewish people. Who for centuries now have been scattered around the known world. But no matter where they lived or what language they spoke, they kept their identity as the family of Abraham 
devoted to the one true God. And every year, they would travel to Jerusalem for sacred festivals. And during one of these, the Feast of Pentecost, the visitors encountered a group of Jews who could somehow speak in everyone's native dialect. Yeah, they were telling stories about a man named Jesus who had been executed by the Romans. They claimed he had risen from the dead and was now exalted as the true king of Israel and the whole world. And this Jesus was now calling people to adopt his upside down set of values and live under his rule called the kingdom of God. And thousands of Jews decided to stay in Jerusalem and join the movement. It grew in size and in influence and gained favor with people. But not with the Jerusalem temple leaders. They viewed this whole thing as a dangerous religious sect, and they even executed one of its leaders named Stephen. It's no longer safe in Jerusalem, and so most of the followers flee for the outlying land called Judea. And you might think that's the end of the story, but actually this tragedy became the way the movement spread outside Jerusalem. That's where the second part of the book of Acts begins. The scattered followers end up in surprising places, like Samaria, where their ancient enemies live. Yeah, and Luke shows us how all of these unexpected people start following Jesus, like a sorcerer from Samaria who has to learn that the way of Jesus isn't about gaining power, but giving it up to serve others. There's also a story about an Ethiopian delegate who, after discussing the scroll of the prophet Isaiah with Philip, decides to join the movement. Yeah, Jesus is expanding his movement out into Judea and Samaria, just like he said he would. Which is great. But back in Jerusalem, we meet Saul of Tarsus. He's part of the religious elite who oppose the new movement, and he's finding and arresting Jesus' followers anywhere he can. This is a cruel guy. But think about it from his perspective. In the past, Israel had turned away to other gods and to false prophets, leading to disaster. He believed he was protecting Israel and God's honor by getting rid of these people. And then Saul hears that the movement spread north to Damascus. So he sets out there to find and arrest more followers. And on the way, Saul has this sudden encounter with the risen Jesus himself. Jesus asks Saul why he's fighting against him. And then Jesus commissioned Saul to now represent him to Israel and to the nations. And Saul is stunned and speechless. And so he ends up in Damascus, but now he's announcing the good news about the Jesus he had just been attacking. And no one saw this coming. Totally. And the same goes for what happened next. Over in the port city of Caesarea, there was a Roman centurion named Cornelius, and he represents everything the Jewish people would hate about the Roman occupation. An angel appears to him, and he tells him to call for a man named Peter. So Peter comes and he finds Cornelius and his friends and his family all gathered together in his home. Yeah, and this is scandalous. Jewish people don't enter a non-Jewish home to avoid ritual impurity. So what's Peter gonna do? Well, right before this, Peter had a vision. God brought to him a collection of animals that his people were forbidden to eat. And then God said to Peter, eat these. And this is shocking to Peter. He says, I've never eaten anything impure. And God responds, don't call impure what I have made pure. And then that's it. The vision was over. So Peter's going to start a new diet? No, he's an Israelite. And he's honored these customary food laws his entire life. The vision was preparing him for this moment of him standing among impure non-Israelites. And he realizes that God is declaring these people are a part of the family of Abraham. And so Peter decides to stay and tell them about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit shows up just as he did at Pentecost, but now it's for a Roman centurion and his non-Jewish family. The movement is broken out. And so back in Jerusalem, Peter is now telling the other apostles about what happened, and they start getting reports about even more non-Jewish people following Jesus up in the big trade city north called Antioch. So they send a man there named Barnabas to check things out. Barnabas finds the Jesus movement alive and well in Antioch, and he finds it's made up of people from all over the world. And so Barnabas recruits Saul to come and work with him in Antioch for a year. They're teaching, living among the people there, watching the movement grow. The church in Antioch was the first international Jesus community, and it is where Jesus' followers were first called Christians, the Christ ones. And so the way of Jesus was transformed from a group of Messianic Jews in Jerusalem into the multi-ethnic Jesus movement spreading through the world. Their faith was the same. It was centered on the good news about the crucified Jesus who is the king of all nations. But that message and their new way of life was confusing, even threatening 
to the average Roman citizen living around them. And the resulting conflict is what we'll explore next as this movement goes global, or as Jesus said, to the ends of the earth. All the early disciples were Jewish, and the Jewish people had a lot of rules about things they could do and couldn't do, things they could eat and not eat, and people that they could hang out with or not hang out with. Jewish people weren't supposed to hang out with and eat with Gentiles because they weren't Jewish. And yet God told Peter to go into the house of a Gentile man named Cornelius to tell him about Jesus. This marked the beginning of non-Jewish believers being included in the Christian church. It's a massive moment. What do you imagine Peter and his friends would have felt or thought as God told them to go into the Gentiles' house? Why are we going to this, you know, Gentile's house? Why are we going to spend time with them? And just not understanding, like, the real purpose behind it. I think that'd be like going to, like, a foreign country equivalent. I even see it at school. If you don't have the right style or, like, you don't talk a certain way or you haven't had certain experiences that you aren't in the in crowd, right? Like, for me, I feel like I've always been taught to, like, love my enemies, and that's something that they're just having to learn. I would have been so confused. I don't like, like, these are the rules. Like, why are you making me break them? You're crazy, man. Yeah. Like, this has been, like, our way of life for, like, uh, oh, yeah, thousands and thousands of years. I feel like they'd be kind of scared. Yeah. Like, they're doing something that's kind of, like, forbidden in society in that time. They probably didn't want to at first. Human nature is to hang out with people who are like you. Usually, if you go outside your comfort zone and, and you hang out with people who aren't similar to you, you might find that they're nice or you like them just as much as the people who you think are similar to you. Well, I bet Peter and his friends were thinking when Jesus asked them to go into that house is, I thought you were here to, to save us, to be here for us. Why these other people? I was always searching to be something that would be accepted. So trying to please everybody and trying to find myself in a, in a little town that was like really crime ridden and ghetto of East St. Louis, Illinois. And so I got into drive-by shootings and, and different things like that, robbing gun shops because I wanted to get those nice guns like you see on TV. As it would turn out, I got into a shootout with an individual at 19 years old. And about seven months later, I was convicted of attempted murder and first degree armed robbery, and I was sentenced to life plus 100 years in prison. And so they put me in this orange jumpsuit, and so I find an empty bunk and I sit down. And I'm trying to wrap my mind around what happened, and just some random guy came and set a cardboard box with a lid on it in front of me, and then he just left. And so I opened the box, and there was snacks, socks, you know, different things like that. And my first thought was, I got to kill this dude because he giving me this stuff. And if I take it, he going to tell me I owe him a bunch of money or he going to want something that I ain't willing to give. So again, leaning to my street mentality, I need to get this dude before he get me. And so later that night came, I walked down to the cell, put my back against the wall, <sighs> took a deep breath and I rushed inside. As soon as I got in there, it was him and two other guys having Bible study. So I just kind of like stopped head in my tracks because I wasn't anticipating that. And so um, he had me this little thing and at the time I didn't know it, but it was a Bible track. And so I took it. So I get to my bunk, I sit down and all I could think about was killing myself. But I'm sitting there and I got this Bible track in my hand. So I open it up and I start reading it. And the first thing it talks about is God and him creating the heavens and the earth. And it's telling me about forgiveness. And it was saying that if I would accept Jesus as my savior, that I could be forgiven of my sins and that heaven can be my destination. So I got on my knees and there was a prayer on the back of this Bible track that I prayed and I prayed my own prayer and I say, God, I don't even know if you're real for real, but if you are, I'm gonna serve you for the rest of my life. It's 
some very different things start taking place in prison. And for the first time in my life, I felt peace. And God really started working on me big time with wanting me to go share Christ with other prisoners. And I'm like, man, like in a maximum security prison around all kind of craziness and chaos, I felt peace and I felt like I knew who I was. I was a child of God, man, doing what God wanted me to do, fulfilling the plan and purpose he had in my life. After 13 years of being incarcerated, the parole board sent me a letter with a hearing date. Six weeks later, they told me they was gonna let me go home in two and a half years. I just started crying and said, thank you, Jesus. I couldn't believe it. In August of 2009, after 15 and a half years, I was just released from prison. I got up here and, and then my first thing is like, I wanna find a church and I wanna serve. Like I'm all about serving, I'm all about giving back to God, I'm all about being the hands and feet. Then the prison started opening for me to come in because people say, hey, you're like one of these guys, but your life has been transformed. Maybe you can share your life and experience with Christ inside and it'll give some other people hope. So I said yes. Typically when I go into a prison, there's a couple things that can happen. And then I'll share my testimony. I'll share things that I know will be very similar, if not exact, to some of their experiences. And what that does is it creates an instant bond because they get to see the only difference between me and them is I'm on the other side of the fence right now. The method that we use to try to help people connect with God and build a relationship is through the Bible, right? That's where we learn about who God is and what he wants us to do. So it's God allowing me to be a part of something that he's doing. It's not my thing, it's his thing, and I'm blessed to just be a part of it. Throughout history and still today, there are people whose lives are changed by Jesus that you would never expect. Acts 9 starts with someone who is so against the Jesus movement that he is violently attacking Jesus' followers. Saul is a man on a mission to arrest and even kill anyone connected to the movement. He wants to destroy the movement before it spreads. And what does Jesus do? He interrupts him on the road and calls him to stop attacking him and instead trust and follow him and it changes Saul's life in a moment. But it doesn't stop there. Saul isn't the only surprise character who puts his trust in Jesus and joins the movement. People from Samaria who were looked down on, hated and avoided by Jews begin to follow Jesus. And it doesn't stop there either. Peter gets invited to a Roman official's house to share his message. This high ranking Roman official named Cornelius comes to faith in Jesus. And we see the spirit of God fill him along with his friends and family in the same way he filled the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And remember, the Romans were the ones who executed Jesus. The message of Jesus, that Jesus is king rather than Caesar, is not a message that Roman authorities would have embraced. The Romans were not just political opponents, they were oppressive enemies of the Jewish people. And since it's such a different time, and we live in a very different culture, we should pause for a moment to try to think of what this would be like today. Who are the people in my mind who I think are too far away or too different or opposed Jesus or Christianity? too much to be included in this kingdom. Now, whether that's people from a different part of town or a different religion, or people who support different political candidates and views, are there people we exclude from the kindness of Jesus because of the group they associate with? Are there people we consider enemies who Jesus may consider future family? Just like this would have been shocking and surprising to our brothers and sisters in those first years of the new kingdom, I think God wants to surprise us today too. In His love for the world and in His wisdom, He sees what we don't see. And He has plans for people to be reconciled to Him that we may never expect. We want to give you a few more minutes to talk about all of this. But first, let's pray together. But before we pray, why don't we take a moment now and think of a person in our lives who maybe before today we would have thought they're too far from God. But now we know there's no one that's too far from Him. So. God, we thank you that you are a good God, that you are a faithful God. And Father, would you place upon our minds, God, someone that we know that we could reach out to, God, to share the good news with you, God, that just like you did in Saul's life, God, that you would change their heart and that you would change their character, God. Give us the strength, God, to go out and do this, God. We thank you and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Choir, for that amazing ministration, and thank you, Switch, for that amazing message I personally gained from your materials. God bless you real good in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, guys, remember, the kingdom of God is for everybody. Yeah, I keep emphasizing, don't let anyone look down on you that you're young. The kingdom of God is for the young, for the old, for the rich, for the poor, for the blacks, for the white, for everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. The kingdom of God is for everybody. It's for all of us. We have one God. Amen. Hallelujah. So please come boldly unto your father. Do not be afraid. If you have any need in your life, go to your father in prayers. Yeah. Your father loves you because he is for everybody. He doesn't discriminate. He doesn't see you as filthy. No. He sees you as his child, as a father would see his child. Praise God. So please do not allow the devil to deceive you or situations or life to deceive you that God has rejected you. No, God has not rejected you. God loves you the way you are. So come boldly unto God with your needs and worship him in spirit and truth. Come to God with sincerity of heart and God is going to help us all in the name of Jesus. So I continue to pray for you guys that uh, God will help you to continue uh, in what you've learned. In the name of Jesus, that you become a firm believer in Christ, knowing from whom they learned. You've learned a lot from God. Yeah, God's going to help you. Yeah, what you've learned from childhood, that when you, some of you are going to universities, colleges very soon, you will not be deceived by the teachings of this world, that God will, you'll be grounded uh, in knowledge and in truth in the name of Jesus. That these scriptures that you've learning, that you've learned, that God's going to help you to practicalize them, to show the world that you are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. You're going to show for the glory of God wherever you find yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. God is going to help you uh, become wiser. Praise God. Become wiser in everything you're doing, in your dealings. You become wiser. Praise the name of the Lord through faith. And I encourage you to read the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 to 16. So that it's going to help you and you're going to pray those scriptures into your life in the name of Jesus. Let be grounded in truth, in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Father, thank you for an amazing time in your presence. Thank you for your kingdom. It's for everybody. Thank you, Lord, for every young person listening to me. Father, I pray for transformation in their life. Even as we are letting life reveal, let them receive the revelation of the knowledge of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them walk in truth in the name of Jesus. Let them be grounded in your knowledge in the name of Jesus. Let them know scripture. They will say, the word, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your word be planted in their heart. Wherever they find themselves, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let them become true ambassadors of Jesus. Let them become teachers of the scripture in the name of Jesus. I remember when Jesus was just 12 years old, he went to the temple and was teaching the scriptures and the people marvel. Father, let the world marvel at the knowledge, at the level of understanding of scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Father, and reward them greatly in the name of Jesus. Let them become a shining stars. Let them become shining light yeah, in their world, at school, at home, wherever they find themselves, Father, so that they become Father, great people tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you always answer our prayers when we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you guys for watching. God bless you real good and remain prayerful. Yeah, remember, I encourage you to study, 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 study. Read the Bible, pray. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know um, one thing that has helped me to stay grounded is studying the Bible and prayer. Yeah, storms may come, but... Once you're planted upon the solid rock, remember that story uh, that Jesus told in the Bible that a foolish man built his house upon the sand, while the wise man built his house upon the uh, solid rock. When the wind comes, the one that built his house upon the rock was still standing, but the one that built his house upon the sand, the house fell down. And please, yeah, challenges will come your way. If you're not grounded, yeah, it's obvious people are not grounded before. But people that are grounded in the world, come what may, they are not afraid. No matter what will come their way, yeah, they are not afraid. They still stand strong. 
and that is your portion. My earnest pray, prayer for you is that you'll be able to stand strong and, and be able to challenge the enemy. So they, they look at the enemy and say, I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, I serve living God. I serve a God that is faithful and be planted. So God bless you until I come your way again next week. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Before we go, let's say our every Sunday confession. It shouldn't be every Sunday confession. It should be our daily confession. Every day you wake up, you tell yourself, I am blessed. Praise God. I am prosperous. I am talented. I am creative. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am free. Say, I am valuable. I am anointed. Amen. I am equipped. God has equipped us. Amen. I am beautiful. Say that to yourself. I am beautiful. Amen. You are beautiful in Jesus' name. Say, I am attractive. Made you attractive in Jesus' name. I am amazing. I love this one. I am amazing. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Child of God, say it like you mean it. I am a child of the Most High God. Praise the name of the Lord. I have seeds of greatness. I have seeds of greatness on the inside of me. I'll become all he has created me to be. I will become all God has created me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I am victorious. We are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a victorious week, my friends, in Jesus' name. God bless you and keep you. God make his face shine over you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. You will excel in this life in the name of Jesus. You shall be called blessed. Blessed are you in your going out. Blessed are you in your coming in in the name of Jesus. You will know the truth and the Bible says if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. You are free indeed in the name of Jesus. No weapon fashion form against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The hand of God rest upon you. Uh, you shall flourish like cedar in Lebanon in the name of Jesus. Your life will not be cut short. You will live to fulfill your days and your assignment men in this life in the name of Jesus. Thank you God for answering our prayers. I pray all this over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone say, Amen. God bless you, real girl. Mm -hmm.